Post Minority Leader Scott Inman, and we are getting to your questions here coming in from Facebook. Barry Jackson asking uh, the representative, do you agree with Governor Mary Fallon that our budget deficit is caused by online shopping instead of tax breaks for oil and gas companies? So just for clarification for our audience, uh, when the governor was here Thursday, she said the two major contributors to our, our deficit right now are the oil downturn and online shopping and the loss of the sales tax to that. Do you agree with that? Um, it, it plays a small portion of it, but to say that it's anywhere near where the gross production tax cuts are is, is really inaccurate. It's almost laughable because if you were to if you were to say, let's collect all the money that Amazon, that the taxes that people pay when they shop at Amazon or things like that, it brings into the state about $200 million roughly, but half of that gets split up. Half goes to cities, half goes to the state. So you're talking about maybe 100, maybe $150 million worth of revenue. The gross production taxes alone cost $500 million. The the income taxes cost over a billion and a half dollars. The tax credits were $2 billion to wealthy corporations. Uh, so no, while it's a small portion of it, to try to make it look like it's just because people like to shop at Amazon, and that's the reason our state's in the financial mess that it's in, is to shirk the responsibility that she had for cutting gross production taxes, cutting income taxes, and giving tax credits and exemptions away to her wealthy friends. Is it something, though, that we need to look at in terms of perhaps curbing that, they, the fact that people are buying online and not getting taxed here at the state level? A absolutely. I mean, you need to look at it, but but that's just more that's just part for the course for what her plans are. It's let's raise gas taxes, let's raise service taxes, let's hit more people who shop middle class families who shop online. Um, all of those are, are need to be part of the idea, part of the solution, but as long as she's going to continue to not um, re restore those tax cuts on, on gross production tax and income taxes and just make it middle class families pay more when they shop, that's not the way to balance the budget. Again, she has he said here, we asked her about it specifically, she said all options were on the table, including gross production tax. I hope so. Uh, in terms of the gasoline tax itself, she points out that we're 48th or 49th, she says, when it comes to the gasoline tax, what people are paying for their state gas tax mm -hmm. at the pump, you know, with vehicles getting more fuel efficient, why is that not something to look at? Well, no, it can be part of the option, right? It can be part of the solution, but when we're also the lowest gross production tax state of any, anyone in any of the nation, but yet she's not putting that on the table. She's not actually come out and actually said, I want that on the table. She said all options are on the table here. She, it, it, that, that sounds good, but until she calls for a gross production tax vote, then, then that doesn't really mean that all options are on the table. And so from my perspective, if we're going to say gas taxes are low, so let's raise taxes on, on middle class families that drive to work or on farmers and ranchers who drive a long way to get to their fields, but yet we're not going to do gross production tax stuff. That doesn't make sense. If they came to us with a package and said, we're going to raise tax on oil and gas companies and we're also going to look at a gas tax um, because they're both historically low, then that's an option that we would consider. But right now, the whole shift seems to be on middle class families, and that's a non-starter for us. Okay, let's look at the next question here yeah. coming in. Uh, the question is, will Representative Inman support the legalization of cannabis, of marijuana? Would you support that as a way to bring in money similar to what Colorado has done, more than $2 billion there for their for their uh, overall uh, in terms of overall uh, impact in terms of their revenue and what I've said is I, I support the medicinal use of marijuana I think that we so medical only. We, we, for right now med medicinal only I, I think we still have to wait and see what the federal government is going to do we've got a situation where in Colorado it brings in several hundred million dollars into the bottom line but as long as the federal government has it outlawed you have people there that cannot put their money in a bank right because as soon as they put it into a bank it's, it's technically illegal and, and violates all kinds of federal laws and that that offers up more opportunity for crime and things like that and so I think until until the feds get that thing situated and to where our banks and all those folks can actually handle the, the, the business side of, of that industry, I, I would be, I'd be concerned about moving forward too quickly there. But on the medicinal side of it, where you go to a pharmacy and you can get it that way, I think it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And tax that at a state level? Absolutely. Okay. I uh, want to move on to this question here. Patrick asks, how do you feel about legislators being fined for every day that a budget is not passed? Yeah. Uh, using, you know, some sort of financial incentive to get this done. I agree. I mean, I, I think if we, especially if this goes into a special session, because they won't come to the table with real revenues, if the governor vetoes a budget and forces us into a special session, I think that I think the legislators uh, ought to have some sort of punishment. If not, if not financially, I think at the at, at the very least, when they go to the ballot box next November, they ought to be punished for not doing their job. Uh, now, in terms of the special session, costs could be upwards of thirty thousand dollars a day. We heard from Senator Holt recently said he has no June vacation plans because he feels like that's where this is heading at this point. Well, I'm, I'm a little more optimistic than my friend David Holt. Uh, I do think that there's a potential that we can cut some sort of deal around a, a smaller package of revenue that that will mitigate or reduce some of the cuts that may come to education, healthcare, and public safety. And I think if we can come to a, sort of a halfway point, 
Uh, odds are the governor will sign a budget and we'll avoid a special session. Well, the governor has said unless there's some real revenue raising measures here, she will veto this. Absolutely, as she should. But our, our perspective is, is we're willing to do some of those things like itemized deduction and, and combined corporate reporting and, and doing some other things along with the cigarette tax as a way to try to help balance the budget. But if we're really going to raise the revenue that we need to get uh, to balance the budget, it's got to have gross reduction taxes included in it. Are there any political calculations here in these budget talks? A skeptic would look at your situation. You've announced you're running for governor and the gridlock, the failure of Republican leadership could create a better political opportunity for you in 2018. Well, I think the failure has already been baked into the cake. I think people have already seen the last seven years. If you, if I were to ask the average Oklahoman, are you better off today than you were seven years ago? The answer is going to be a resounding no. And so I don't have to do anything to demonstrate that they failed. Matter of fact, if it were, if it were up to me, if, if it was all, if I just wanted to play the pure political game and say, just let it burn down. Well, I wouldn't have offered up a $1.4 million billion dollar restoring Oklahoma plan to help balance a budget. I wouldn't be working with the speaker and the pro tem in order to help find some revenues to help balance a budget. Those would be counterproductive to, to, to the argument that you're making. But I truly believe in the state. I want to see the state do well. And if the state does well and that's at my expense, then that's okay. I would certainly not, I don't want to do well at the state's expense. That's, that's, those are political games that have real consequences for the citizens of the state and they're games I don't want to play. Okay. And real quick, what are the chances of a teacher pay raise? Uh, right now, I think I think they're pretty small unless we find some significant revenue. All right, so not looking good there. Not right now. Okay, uh, Representative Scott Inman, thank you for joining Thanks, us Steve. this morning. We'll watch what happens here in the next few weeks. Uh, we're going to be back right after this.